Hello everyone, there are two questions that we wish to ask and find answers to on the show this afternoon. What will the speaker do on BJP MP Nishikan Dubey's letter and will the CBI act on lawyer Jay Dehadri's complaint? It's clearly double trouble for TMC MP Mahua Moitra. BJP MP Nishikant Dubey has written to Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla alleging that MP Mahua Moitra took bribes to raise questions in Parliament to protect the interest of a business group. He urged the Speaker to set up a committee to probe the allegations and sought her suspension from the House till the panel submitted its report. In this letter, which has been written by Nishikan Dubey, he has alleged that he had received documents from an advocate, Jay Anant Dehadri, who he claimed shared irrefutable evidence of bribes exchanged between the TMC MP and businessman Darshan Hiranandani to ask questions in Parliament. Let me do a quick recap for you as to what do we know so far. Nishikan Dubey in his letter has said that of 61 questions, Asked between 2019 and 2023, 50 were at the behest of businessman Darshan Hiranandani. And Darshan Hiranandani gave Mahua Moitra 2 crore in 2021 is what he is saying. Mahua Moitra got money to tarnish Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Gautam Adani's image in world media. The MP had given the businessman direct access to her Lok Sabha account. And the TMC MP, remember in that period of four and a half years, had asked questions on oil and gas supply from Paradeep, Dhamra port, questions that were related to urea subsidy, among others. So what is lawyer Jay Dehadri saying in his affidavit before the CBI? He's saying that Darshan Hira Dandani sent documents against Gautam Adani to Mahua Moitra in 2019. Remember, Hindenburg, in fact, reflects Mahua's charges against Gautam Adani. And Mahua raised questions to target Prime Minister Modi, Gautam Adani. Remember, Hiranandani Group lost infra energy projects to Adani Group. So it is very much a corporate rivalry which was at play here. And Hiranandani lost Dhamra Port, Odisha Port to Adani Ports in 2014. So what next in the case? Those are the questions that we are asking on the show. And let me go straight to Akhilesh Sharma who is joining me live. Akhilesh Sharma, what are you picking up from the Speaker's office? Well, I have spoken to uh, various sources in the Lok Sabha Secretariat. They have confirmed that they have received the letter written by BJP MP Nishikan Dubey. This letter was received yesterday. But in fact, uh, they are not disclosing what next action uh, the speaker is likely to take because as per the procedure, once the letter is received, the speaker and uh, his staff goes uh, uh, into the letter and the details and the allegations and uh, prima facie if they find that the allegations have some substance, then they, uh, this uh, complaint may be referred uh, to the either uh, to the ethics committee or uh, the speaker can form a separate committee. Remember in 2005 when a similar allegations uh, surfaced against 10 Lok Sabha MPs and one Rajya Sabha MP, that time a special committee was uh, constituted under the uh, chairmanship of Pawan Kumar Bansal, uh, the Congress leader that time. And that committee had gone into the allegations of this string operation against these 10 MPs from Lok Sabha and one from Rajya Sabha. And the committee had found out <coughs> that the uh, allegations were true and after that the committee had recommended that all those 11 MPs should be disqualified from parliament and uh, a resolution was moved and all of them were disqualified. In fact, the Delhi police launched a criminal investigation into those allegations and now the trial is going on in the special court. So this is a very serious matter because uh, uh, an MP is expected to ask questions related to only the public interest and not for the benefit of any business house. And in this case, <coughs> the allegation is very clear that Mahua Mohitra asked 50 questions out of 61, which were, you know, favoring Hiranandani group. So it's a very serious allegation and the speaker of is saying that they will go into the allegations and they will then decide the next course of action. Kilesh, last time around, as you were saying, in 2005, I'm looking at the timeline and it was clear that in record 23 days, the entire investigation um, of the Pavan Bansal uh, committee was completed and the then leader of the house, Pranam Mukherjee had moved the motion that all the 10 members from the Lok Sabha be expelled. So everything happened in a matter of just 23 days. Is That's there a correct. timeline that Om Birla will be looking at? 
that's correct, uh, Maria. In fact, you know, that time there was a sting operation, so there were evidences of video and audio evidences. In fact, many of the uh, MPs were accused at that point of time. They denied their allegation, uh, those allegations, but of course, the committee had found out uh, through the electronic evidences that, you know, that of course they had taken bribe in lieu of asking questions uh, in parliament, and that's why uh, this committee expedited the matter. And that, that point of time, there was a hue and cry across the country because everybody was so agitated that how come all the MPs, you, you can, they can uh, take money to ask questions and it was a very serious matter in fact lk advan and pranam Mukherjee, both of them you know they had uh, their meeting and decided that the uh, uh, immediate action should be taken against these mps uh, despite the fact that main majority of the mps uh, they were belonging to the bjp but despite that fact lk advani uh, you know he, he gave a go ahead that you know they should be disqualified and this uh, time also uh, as, as I mentioned, you know, the Speaker Office will go into the complaint and uh, he will uh, look into the allegations made by Nishikan Duban. Also, uh, the evidence is submitted by him, and after that, he will decide whether to send it to the Ethics Committee or uh, form a special committee as demanded by Mr. Nishikan Duban. Okay, so there will whether there will be a separate committee which will be investigating this, or whether this letter written by Nishikan Duban, in which he has attached uh, the affidavit of Jay Dehadri, be forwarded to the Ethics Committee. That decision will be taken by the local. Sabha Speaker, a quick word from you. Uh, also, Arvind, what is the CBI planning to do on the complaint by Jay Dehadri? Maria, this is the uh, first instance where such a case has been referred to the Central Bureau of Investigation. Though, if you are drawing parallel to the 2005 case of cash for questions uh, a matter, that particular case was uh, probed by the uh, Delhi Police uh, Parliament Street. In fact, Parliament Street uh, Police Station of Delhi Police registered this FAR in 2007. The FAR number 96 of 2007 was registered by the Parliament Street Police Station based on the report of both Lok Sabha and Raj Sabha Privilege Committees because both the Lok Sabha and Raj Sabha Privilege Committee explicitly in their report had said that this particular uh, this particular case of alleged corruption uh, should be uh, approved in accordance with law and taking cognizance of the reports of both Lok Sabha and Raj Sabha Privilege Committee the Parliament Street Police Station in 2007 registered that particular case and then uh, Delhi Police after investigating the matter for two years filed a charge sheet in 2009 if I'm not wrong against almost 11 uh, former MPs and that particular matter is currently under trial in the Rouse Avenue Court. So if at all if this particular case has to be uh, taken cognizance by the Central Bureau of Investigation then this will be the first instance where CBI will be entering this particular arena though the complainant, a private a complainant has filed the complaint with the Central Bureau of Investigation. There are two issues that the Central Bureau of Investigation, CBA, has to uh, satisfy itself. Whether whether CBA has a jurisdiction in this particular case, though in the uh, PBR Narasimha Rao judgment of 1998, the majority uh, has already held that the uh, Member of Parliament is a public servant under Prevention of Corruption Act. So it's, it's a settled law that uh, an MP is a, is a public servant under the ambit of Prevention of Corruption Act. So one particular jurisdiction, whether CBI can take cognizance of this particular case under Prevention of Corruption Act, has already, has already been settled by the Supreme Court in the 1998 judgment. So in that particular case, uh, under the Prevention of Corruption Act, CBI can take cognizance. But in this particular case, uh, whether CBI can take uh, can exercise jurisdiction here, territorial jurisdiction here, is something that we have to uh, we have to uh, wait uh, for the view of final view of CBI because uh, Mahwa Moitra is an MP from uh, West Bengal. So uh, CBI does not have a original jurisdiction when it comes to uh, West Bengal, a state of West Bengal, because unlike Union Territory, CBI uh, uh, has to take. Uh, consent from the appropriate state government to register a case uh, to, to prove the matter. So in this particular case, whether CBI has ju territorial jurisdiction is something that we have to wait and uh, wait and watch uh, how CBI interprets that particular point. Though uh, in one of the allegation of the one of the allegations referred in the complaint uh, refers to the telegraph lane that is a residence of official residence of the MP in the national capital. So in that particular context, CBI does have territorial jurisdiction. Also, very importantly. Maria in this particular case is that even though CBI can exercise Prevention of Corruption Act because that has been alleged in this particular complaint but uh, uh, Section 17A which has been amended uh, in the 2018 uh, in the Prevention of uh, Corruption Act that clearly says that before initiating any uh, investigation or any inquiry for that matter under the Prevention of Corruption Act CBI has to or any law enforcement agencies uh, they have to get the uh, concern, uh, permission from the appropriate uh, authority. So in this particular case even before CBI to register a case or even to initiate a preliminary inquiry CBI has to get 17A sanction from 
फ्रॉम लोकसभा स्पीकर सो बिकॉज शी इज अ लोकसभा एम पी दर्मिशन हैज टू बी सॉर्ट फ्रॉम लोकसभा स्पीकर दैट्स वाई देर आर सेवरल लीगल इशूज दैट हैव टू बी सेटल बिफोर सी बी आई टेक्स कॉग्निशंस ऑफ दिस मैटर बट फॉर नाउ ओनली द कंप्लेट हेज बी लॉन्च विद सी बी आई एंड वी हैव टू वेट एंड वॉच हाउ सी बी आई इंटरप्रेट दिस पर्टिकुलर मैटर इवन दो टू थाउजेंड फाइव केस वॉज प्रूव बाई डेली पोलिस एंड दैट वॉज अ मोर ओपन केस बिकॉज देर आर वीडियो एविडेंस देर आर अदर एक्सप्लिस एविडेंस इन दैट पर्टिकुलर मैटर All right, Arvind and uh, Akhilesh, thank you so much for your time. Navneet Vasan is former CBI Joint Director. He's joining me live. We also have Desh Ratan Nigam, Advocate of the Supreme Court. Uh, Rajat Sethi, political analyst, is joining us as well. Uh, Desh Ratan Nigam, you know there are wheels within wheels, as I've been suggesting. And what is increasingly becoming clear is that here is a dossier which is given by uh, Darshan Hiranandani to uh, uh, Mahua Moitra. and 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 then mahua moitra frames her questions allegedly uh, in the lok sabha and everything is done to target gautam adani's businesses there are business background the corporate rivalry between the two groups is evident so clearly when we look at it there is also that conspiracy of trying to defame this group and prime minister modi in international arena so it's becoming very clear that what happened one and a half years back be it george soros or hindenburg report all of them had linkages bhai in fact you are absolutely right and allow me to recall the fact that when the hindenburg report came which actually hindenburg is quite well known for doing the hit jobs whether it is us or otherwise where they have been banned also and uh, when it came i clearly made a point that in fact on all the channels that it's a hit job it's a conspiracy by international players with the you know uh, involvement of some indian players as well and that should be investigated now that tar as you we call it or wires are now getting exposed as to how uh, a particular real estate agent or a group was able to utilize a member of parliament to settle his scores with adani and along with that that got mixed up with the anti india conspiracy as well now if you look at the india becoming the third largest economy and uh, the targets are these important you know industrial groups in india it is adani today it will be tomorrow it will be some other big groups whereas these groups are working in almost all the states and are all the political parties so it has to be looked from the non political prism hmm. not from the political angle and the crimes which is being committed now they have entered parliament the prima facie you know view that i have is the allegations which are very serious and dangerous as well including that the account was given access to a particular group to raise questions against adanis is something which is very serious it has this anti india and anti modi and uh, you know the entire uh, uh, you know uh, targeting the indian economy which is rising at this point of yes. time so you can yes, understand so there is the, a larger conspiracy vested interest groups are all coming out clearly in the open uh, navneet wasan in case of 2005 there was an inquiry which was done by the lok sabha under uh, you know pavan bansal who was heading that committee then there was also a complaint which was being investigated by the delhi police so there was these were the two developments with, which were happening in this particular case jay dehadri has also written to the cbi and he is also a witness in which he is saying that he was present when uh, darshan hiranandani would be giving dossier when he was exchanging information so all that he is privy to that information so he is also a witness and the complainant here right uh, you see since uh, these exchanges which i believe i don't know for sure but uh, what i heard on uh, news uh, what i read in the newspapers these exchange of gifts or money would have taken place in delhi so cbi has the cbi has a concurrent jurisdiction and it can register a case of corruption under pc act uh, as uh, if if the complaint given by this uh, advocate reveals a cognizable offense prima facie cognizable offense hmm. there is no need even to conduct a pe in this matter and they can straight away register a case and take up the investigation so would you say then But, would you the say then uh, navneet wasan because i'm going through these pages of uh, complaint by uh, uh, jay dehadri he is talking specifically about which ministry which department and all these 50 questions which will be a subject of record and that is the reason why he also has it 
So this is a written question all over a subject of record. So prime of SI, you have those evidence. You see, uh, for, uh, what I think is asking question on a particular subject, maybe repeatedly, maybe several times, hmm. but there is no uh, quid pro quo. And an MP is asking questions as he can always raise questions of public importance. That will not be offense. That will not become a criminal case. No investigation can take place. Hmm. But taking money, accepting money, and then asking particular questions are, as uh, uh, my co-panelist was telling, that allowing access to the MP's account to put questions. No, that will make a case. That will make a criminal case. That will establish, if it is found to be true, that there was a conspiracy hmm. and gifts were taken and the questions were deliberately asked with a motive. So that will make the case. Simply that he asked uh, 50 questions out of 61 yes. on a particular subject, that in itself will not be enough. Well, Jaydi Hadri is saying that there are vested interests, that there is an exchange of money, that there was amount of 2 crore that was given to her allegedly in 2021. Before I bring in Rajat, let me bring in Vasudha. Vasudha, you know, everybody seems to be asking who is Jay Dehadri and why is his role or why is his complaint important and why should his complaint be taken seriously? Right. Uh, so, Maria Jai Diadre is, is a Delhi-based lawyer and he runs a, a criminal litigation firm and, you know, this firm actually has around 300 clients and that is what his public profile says and uh, they have dealt with cases of uh, uh, taxes and then they've also looked at, uh, uh, you know, they also have a lot of foreign clients and that is what I understand from the website and this guy is somebody who's quite accomplished because he's also uh, someone who has studied in UPenn, uh, University of Pennsylvania. He also has, uh, he's also worked under former CG. Uh, SA Bob Day. So uh, clearly, uh, you know, he has a very hefty profile when it comes to uh, being a lawyer and also look at his, uh, you know, kind of clients. So, you know, he has a variety of clients, of course, uh, should be in his 30s is what I understand. And uh, when you look at the affidavit also, it clearly shows that they, uh, both Mohamed Moitra and Jayati Adri have been friends. Uh, they've shared a, a bond at some point. That is what, uh, you know, comes across because he also talks about, you know, uh, witnessing some of these incidents. Like he says, he, he talks about like, you know, evidence being present for the PA of the PA of uh, Mr. Darshan Hiranandani actually coming to Mahua Moitra allegedly and handing over papers regarding the Adani group and a uh, couple of other things which make it seem like he probably was uh, is somebody who, who has seen all of this from very close quarters. So that is Jay Dehadri because he is someone who is witness in this case is what he is saying in this uh, you know complaint before uh, the CBI. Uh, really appreciate your time, Vasudha. Uh, Rajat Sethi, uh, you know, let's not look at this from the prism of politics. If we look at the details here, this is about corruption and and it's about corporate rivalry and an MP becoming a pawn clearly and playing a role and she's part of the larger conspiracy is is becoming clear from these documents. Rajat, you have to unmute yourself. Yeah, sorry. See, um, of course, there is, uh, you know, at least uh, if I were to see the letter, what the lawyer has put out in his complaint, it's astonishing the amount of, uh, you know, uh, easy uh, to verify evidences that are that that would be all around. Uh, you know, you can very easily establish that the 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 IP, the internet protocol that was used, uh, where were uh, her login credentials of her MP account to ask questions, where were all they situated? You can very easily get those uh, IP details. You can very easily verify. You know, he's went into detail saying that there is another member of parliament from Odisha who was the one uh, who acted as a conduit between uh, uh, the Hiran and Dani uh, company and uh, and uh, uh, Mahua Moitra. And uh, this concerned, this, there are not just single member of parliament, there are possibly more members of parliament involved in this. So, you know, the more you dig deeper into this, uh, into this entire corruption case, you will see that there is a whole nexus of our elected members of representatives, members of parliament, uh, going in and trading their privilege to ask questions uh, on our behalf, on the behalf of the citizens, and trading it on um, uh, uh, with a corporate house who has vested interest in pulling down another corporate house. This is as uh, you know as corrupt, as morally bankrupt as it can get. 
and i think Besides, this is where it's, it's uh, also our, about probity it's about probity in public life uh, there is no, breach of privilege our, there is criminal conspiracy all these charges are here now it's, it doesn't appear to be just about ethics anymore would you say that navneet wasan yeah when that, that, that is there if this is what is found to be true in investigation these are very serious charges and uh, uh, you know uh, this is something which should be investigated uh, very diligently and very very carefully uh, if if this has happened and somebody is asked questions on the behest of somebody after taking money after taking bribe okay i i have just enough time for deshrath nigam deshrath nigam and then the final word to rajat go ahead mr nigam uh, uh, maria in fact uh, if you look at the adanis they have become an international company with their footprints all over the world and now i believe the international players do not like this and their contribution to indian economy along with various other industrial groups so if you target the big indus industrial groups in this country whether it is adanis or the other industrial houses probably the way the conspiracies are going on with some international media you know also trying to hype it up uh, will target other industrial houses as well today is the time that all the politicians industrial houses and everybody who thinks that india is to become a third largest economy and ultimately the first largest economy must come together this is about india this is about industrial houses in india who are working who are creating uh, you know employments generating huge amount of employment we have to come together and take a united against uh, uh, stand against uh, such kind of you know conspiracies and our member of parliament should be elected by the people of this country I have also to come out against such you know uh, exceptions i would call them exceptions although i just say think there are many others also involved here and that could be a possibility and only investigations can reveal that hmm. and it cannot be taken you know it has to be given the most serious thought that can be given to an issue yes. and the parliamentarians must you know make sure that a person is prosecuted for the crimes that they have committed whether they are member of parliament or not let supreme court make its own call but it is the parliamentary privileges committee which can take its first action okay uh, raja you know the larger question is that we know what ha all happened in the sense that if you go back in time there were series of events that were happening all targeting one particular business house that was gautam adani's adani group it cannot be without a reason no, and sir. now we are seeing that it you know there are statements that were being made there is a business group which which was using perhaps allegedly using an mp's privileges for raising those questions against another business group here uh Dar uh, darshan hiranandani against uh, gautam adani but the larger question is that that who is really the bigger player or are there more players in this well interestingly there have been lot of invisible hands at play uh, in pulling uh, the adani group down um, perhaps there might be some international groups who doesn't want to see an indian conglomerate rise up um uh, all of those things i mean uh, currently i think uh, the entire adani group is going through a very close scrutiny and so far you know they have been trying to address uh, all of these questions before the sebi before the supreme court and it is going to the highest level of scrutiny by the way so they are going through the test of fire similarly if there is a member of parliament or any other corporate house they too have to go through the test of fire but my bigger worry here is there is attempt very serious attempt from very important quarters to water down this controversy to trivialize this controversy and i can quote you indian express comes out and says that tmc mp won't concede an inch you know why would an indian express jump into an immediate defense of uh, of a member of parliament who's been accused of very very serious corrupt charges my point is that there will be more such platforms which would jump into this just to give her an intellectual cover give her a cover that oh these are two trivial and allegations from coming in from another corporate interest that should there should be no such attempt there should be fair investigations the the evidences are littered everywhere the investigative agencies should immediately seize of the market uh, you know get the matter in their hands ensure that these evidences are not tampered with these evidences should be collected and a logical conclusion to this case should be brought in okay. meanwhile if required the speaker can come in and suspend the the member of parliament till uh, you know these prima facie case is not established around all right rajat sethi and deshrath nigam navneet wasan thank you so much for your time news and updates will continue on the other side thank you